Hey guys, welcome back to HMHT. My name is Ben, your host, of course. And today, Apple has finally released macOS Pixel 11.4 beta 2 at the time i'm recording this video this is only available to developer beta testers and perhaps by the time you see this video it could be out to public beta testers also as soon as it comes out i'll update you on my social media handles now this update comes two weeks after beta 1 and for me the update size was actually 2.85 gigs and i was updating from 11.4 beta 1. During the update process I actually incurred a number of failed attempts and I had to do it like three times and then after that it um, was accepted and after it was accepted it actually started flying because I was on a strong Wi-Fi connection. So that's something that you could also incur and if we go to the Apple uh, website just to see some other updates that were released you can see that today we have macOS Pixel 11.4 beta 2 on May 4th and all these other ones were actually released on april 30th so ios ipad watch os tv os were released last week so this is the only update that came out today and it's a bit late but at least it's here and we have it so if we go to see the build number that came with this update go to the about this mark section you can see the new build number and it shows up right away and it's 20f5055c we have a C at the end and previously on beta 1 of macOS Pixel 11.4, we had 20F5046G. So we went from a G to a build number that has a C at the end, which is quite a significant jump. So that's the build number that we have. And then if we go to the storage section, we want to see how much space is being taken up by the system. It just takes a moment to load. And as you can see here, system is taking up 16.45 gigs. That's almost exactly as beta one, so no change in that aspect. Now, let's go on to talk about the new features and changes that came with this update. The first one that I have to mention that actually is available to everyone, whether you are on Catalina or Mojave, is that today Apple released a new version of Safari and it's 11.1. .1. So if you are on Mojave, Mojave users and also macOS Catalina users can update to Safari 14.1. The way you are able to tell your Safari version, just make sure that you have opened your Safari and then go to Safari here and then go to about Safari. Since I'm already on macOS Pixel 11.4, you can see my version that I have 14.1.1 so i'm a bit ahead but if you are on catalina or mojave you get a safari update that fixes two webkit vulnerability issues that were patched so that's something good the other thing that i have to mention that changed with this update has to do with uh, developers and to be specific let's just look at the release notes here and it has to do with xcode deprecations so when it comes to this update, I think when it comes out officially, so it says don't use iOS minimum OS version information property list key to declare the minimum release of macOS which your apps runs on. Instead, you should use LS minimum system version instead. So that's something that's changes. And you can see that here it says for iOS. And also here you can see that future releases of macOS ignore the minimum OS version key in Mac apps, including apps built by Mac Catalyst. So this is something that you need to take in mind. And just the last paragraph here, it says, Future releases of macOS use the LS minimum system version key in iOS apps built with Xcode 12.5 or later. And if an iOS app doesn't include the LS minimum version key, future releases of macOS compare the app's minimum OS version with the version of its Mac Catalyst runtime to determine compatibility. So it's just minor wording changes if you make or develop apps using Xcode. So instead of just you know what was put before where you would like to describe the minimum supported OS version that's supported on your application for iOS and macOS before developers would use minimum OS version 
and that wording is no longer going to be supported when this update comes out and also for ios this wording no longer is going to be supported now you need to use ls minimum system version instead of minimum os version just minor wording changes when it comes to this update now this update also supports air tags of course i didn't highlight this on beta one but yeah if you have air tags this update supports those and it's also available on the new find my network now also something else that i need to highlight has to do with the new imac so this is the new 24 inch imac that was just released this year in 2021 this new imac supports this update and if we go down a little bit you can see that you have a place where you can get some information and it tells us when it's going to be available you can see that it's available second half of may so this sort of gives us a hint that perhaps when it comes to mac os pixel 11.4 it could be released in the second half of may and of course with this update you get a new hello screensaver for this new uh, 24 inch imac so if you have this imac you can easily go into your system preferences and you'll be able to see a new hello wallpaper for for me since i don't have the new imac if i go to desktop and screen savers and go to the screen saver section you will see that i don't have the new hello screen saver but this is something that's going to be in the new uh 24 inch imac that it's coming on the second half of may so this update supports that and also something else that's supported with this update has to do with the new magic keyboard so this is the new magic keyboard that even has a fingerprint sensor that came with the new imac max that we just released and it's actually supported on mac os pixel 11.4 and when this update comes out perhaps in the second half of may you'll be able to use this new fancy keyboard with finger uh, with fingertips it says here so that's something good that came with this update and also something that i forgot to highlight on beta one i had not uh, researched it that well so if you go into your system preferences and go to general and go to where it says uh, highlight color here so since you saw that the new iMac is available in so many colors so let's just go to the new iMac here you can see the variety of colors that are available for the new iMac so if you want to change the way your text or your highlights look and you want them to look like you know the color of your mac let's say you have blue or so on you can easily go into your system preferences and select a highlight color which says this mac now this is going to be available for the new imac when it comes out and it would just mean that you know your highlight colors are going to look like what the color of the mac looks and also something that was mentioned in the code that you might have probably missed in beta one i think i highlighted it a little bit has to do with podcasts so wording changes came to mac os pixel 11.4 that described subscription services that could be potentially coming to the podcast app in future so you could perhaps have it on a bundle where you'd have to go into your system preferences and then go to your iCloud or Apple ID and subscribe for a bundle perhaps Apple Music and that also incorporates the podcast so this is something that isn't here fully but it's mentioned in the code of mac os pixel 11.4 now we want to compare this to beta one so let me actually just resize this and try to make it a little bit smaller so that we can put it side by side so what you are seeing here are the results for beta 2 and now these are the results for beta 1 so let's go forward to where the results are so you can see that on 11.4 beta one single core i had a score of 747 and multi core i had a score of 3108 so you can see that beta one here was actually way better when it comes to cpu scores compared to beta 2 you can see that beta 2 falls behind by quite a large sum on both single core and multi core but i have a feeling that if i'm to run the geekbench score on cpu here i would 
probably get higher numbers slightly so that's just a rough representation and then when it comes to gpu let's just go forward a little bit and see the gpu scores so on beta 2 i got a score of 17329 and on beta 1 cpu let's just go on you can see that the score that i had here on beta 1 17035 so cpu this update is slightly above almost by 300 not by much it's not something that you're going to see but basically you can see that when it comes to performance it's not much of a performance boost over beta 1 cpu is more or less the same if not even a little bit slower and gpu it's not a change that you are going to see now that's how performance is on this update and as you can see most of my applications here are working i tested most that i use like safari chrome and so on and also i tested apple apps like imovie and final cut pro so performance you can see that it's almost the same or more or less the same as beta one and basically that's how this update came in for me with regards to when we can see it being released like i mentioned the new imacs are going to be released as apple said in the second half of may so perhaps this update could be released in the second half of may and as you can see since today is actually may 4th perhaps from the 17th of may all the way to the end of may we could possibly be getting an update when it comes to mac os and of course let's not forget that wwdc kicks off on the 7th of june to the 11th so that's when this update could be released in the second half of may and then after that wwdc kicks off and then we get the next big mac os update now other than that that's about it for me guys if you like this video please leave a like and if you haven't subscribed a sub will be fantastic stay safe and i'll see you in the next video peace